to do. Um, because looking at Goliath was looking at a mountain that was unmovable. And it was looking at a situation that, that it did not look like you could win. You couldn't be successful. Israel, Saul didn't want to put Israel in a position where um, they would now be uh, slaves of the Philistines. Um, but there was a young man, and his name was David. And David was uh, the eighth son of Jesse. And uh, he was the baby son. And he was often put out to uh, carry uh, on and take care of the sheep. Uh, he was a shepherd. His brothers were in Israel's army, and, and that was the case with most um, Jews or most Israelites, that at some time, at parts in their age, they had to join the army. So David was too young at that time to actually be part of the army. But he had an important job, and the important job was he was a shepherd to the sheep, and which was an income, was an employment. And um, so so David, um, in the work that he, he had done, or the work that he was doing, his father called him home and said, I want you to send you to look after the brothers to see how they're faring, what's happening with them. And he sent them also with some food for his brother. And uh, David gets there and he sees what's going on. And uh, he hears about Goliath, and he hears about uh, what's happening and the threat and, and the intimidation. Um, part of what I want to talk about today is don't be intimidated by your circumstances. Don't allow your circumstances to become so big that uh, you are now afraid. Remember, the Bible says... God has not given us the spirit of fear. And, and, and that's something that you're going to see in the land today. You're going to see a lot of fear. Um, uh, we often talk about it at our church, um, that, that in this day and time, there are more neuroses, there are more fears, there are more um, types of fear, uh, mental illnesses, uh, than ever before, and people are afraid. People are afraid of leaving their houses. People are afraid to apply for work and yes. promotions and jobs. People are afraid of uh, co-workers. People are afraid of their neighbors. Um, there, 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 there are all kinds of fears and phobias, and, and God's telling us, uh, fear not. He said, I'm with you. Um, the Bible tells us that if I be with you, I'm more than the whole world that is against you. Uh, God wants you to be fearless. Now, how do you become fearless? Well, um, prayer will help you unite with God. If, if you abide in God and his word abide in you, it takes away the fear. The reason we have fear is because we're absent from the Word. The Word is not abiding in us because the Word will give you courage. What are you talking about? Well, um, well, the Word is the Spirit. And it's the Spirit, uh, Paul said, that helpeth our infirmity. Yes. Fear is an infirmity. But the Spirit of God, the Word of God, will help you conquer fear. Somebody say amen. Amen. We're, we, we are, we're grateful. We're, we're grateful and we're thankful. And that's not to say I've never been afraid. That's not to say that um, there are situations that have not brought fear to me. But what I've done is I've gone to God in prayer. I went to God in into his word. I, I I, I, and the Lord began to build me up so that I was united with his word. And if you're united with God's word, uh, it's impossible for you to fear. Um, the scripture tells us 
uh, um, that, 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 that God said in the word, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, believe in God, believe also me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. Many. So whatever you're going through right now, and it can seem like a mountain. It can look like a mountain. It can feel like it's a mountain. But God is able to help you to overcome each and every of those situations. Uh, but again, you have to be uh, prayed up. You have to be in his word. So David goes, he comes, and he, he, he listens to the king, and he listens to Goliath, and he, his brothers there are uh, trying to make fun of him and say, you're coming here to, to agitate us, and you, know, you should be home. And, uh, but he hears Goliath, and what he hears, he does not like. Mm -hmm. And David has no fear. Again, the Bible says, come unto me all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Um, so so um, David doesn't have any fear. And he feels insulted when he hears what's coming out of Goliath's mouth. Goliath says, well, he said, you're, you're cowards, you're, you're, you're um, uh, little uh, nothings, and... and uh, he insults them about being afraid. And so David then tells Saul, said, I'll go out and I'll go and fight this uh, champion of the Philistines. And not only will I fight him, he says that I'm going to win. God's going to allow us to be victorious. Who is this uh, uncircumcised Philistine. Who is this person that, that is standing up against the Almighty God? We have to remember. Now listen to this. We got to remember that God is the creator of all things. Meaning that he created the heavens, the earth, the planets, the universe, the universes. God is the creator of all things. He created man. He created uh, all the things that are here. So who is this individual, one person? Uh, David said, who is man that we are mindful of him? And that's sometimes we'll look at that. We'll look at man's income, man's social status. We'll look at man's opportunities. Um, and then we'll begin to look at those things and feel inferior. God doesn't want you to feel inferior to no individual. If you have God in you and God is walking in you, God wants you to know that you are more than a conqueror to them that love Christ. And that does not, he doesn't itemize it. God lets you know that you're more than a conqueror. So David goes and he goes after, uh, he goes out and he goes to meet uh, Goliath and Goliath sees him and he starts to make fun of him. He says, you're sending a child to me and uh, then he says, well, I'm, a, uh, uh, I'm going to destroy you and I'm going to feed you to the birds. And David says that uh, you come out to me uh, with a sword and a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And so David goes, he has five stones. And he doesn't need those five. He only needs one. And he takes that one stone in the slingshot and he throws it and uh, he hurls it. And, uh, you know, God will uh, allow you to come out of your situation every time. Um, the Bible says uh, with every temptation, God will prepare a way of escape. Um, it's just that we need to look for that way. We need to um, seek that. And, uh, again, the Bible says, seek and, and you shall find. You shall find. I, I, I want to encourage you all because, you know, I'm facing uh, a couple of, of uh, serious uh, situations now. But I feel confident that God did not bring me, my wife, this far to leave us. 
Um, James Cleveland, I believe, sang a song that says, um, uh, I, don't feel no I don't feel no ways tired. And, uh, and he, God didn't bring us this far to leave us. And those are the confidence. That's the confidence that you need to have well, and as a young person, as a, a person that's adult, as a person that is an elder, as a person that uh, is in, in, in the uh, ripe old age, you need to have the confidence that God did not bring you this far to leave you. He's not going to leave you. Uh, in fact, I remember when I was first baptized and received the, the, the Holy Ghost, and I heard the Spirit of God said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. And I'm going to take that with me to the day that I closed my eyes and uh, for the last time, that, that he'll never leave me, and nor will he forsake me. And that's the same promise that he's promised to you. And I want you to to, to be encouraged, whatever you're going through, and I know that your test is is great. I know that your your trying of your faith is great. The Bible tells us, think it not strange when the fiery trials of this life come to try your faith. God is doing this for a purpose, and that purpose is for us to know His glory. Now, David goes out. He has his slingshot. He hurls his stone. The stone then finds Goliath's forehead and knocks Goliath out. David then goes and takes Goliath's sword, which he came out, which he said that he was there to feed Goliath. Uh, and, um, Goliath said he's going to feed David to the fowls of the air. David takes the sword and cuts off Goliath's, Goliath's head. And uh, uh, then he shows the head to all of the Philistines, yes. and, and they can't believe it. God will put you in a situation to bring you out, and others will say uh, they can't believe it. But that's a miracle. God wants to perform miracles in your life. He wants to demonstrate that he is real. Um, Overseer Shelley and I, we're not here talking um, because uh, this is some imaginary man that we're serving. Both of us have personal experiences. In fact, we were put together um, by the Spirit of God. Amen. I knew my wife only three weeks. Um, the late Chief Apostle Julia Williams, um, I received a call from her and uh, she conveyed to me um, through another person that this individual, she was uh, Margaret uh, Zimmerman at the time, was my wife. And um, uh, she was my wife and uh, asked me what was I going to do. And I was newly converted, newly, uh, new individual in the Lord. And, uh, um, uh, but I believed God and God had given me a witness. I remember March the 31st, 1984, I had a dream. And in the dream, it was this woman, uh, a beautiful woman, who my brother was encouraging me to marry. And uh, I'm just talking about how God will work a miracle for you. I had just come out of a bad relationship, was trying to find a direction in my life. Um, I was... Uh, doing some different things, um, and um, the Lord gave me this dream. And in the dream, my brother said, encouraged, this, encouraged me to marry this woman. And I said, coming out of the dream,